What is up, everybody? It's Mike here. I feel like I'm back. Like, this is like a homecoming video. Well, kind of. You know, I felt like these past couple months, I've just been in such a whirlwind. I did an Ironman two weeks ago, and then last week I moved out. And just like everything leading up to the Ironman, I was so focused on like just training and doing like client fulfillment type work that I really didn't do a lot of like content creation and sales stuff for us. So now that that's all over, I was actually talking to an agent today. I was like, I feel so excited because I just like, I have no obligations coming up, no thing to like that I've signed myself up for, like my sole focus for these weeks moving forward, just for a long period of time moving forward. It's just going to be focused on really just work, you know, and this includes creating more content. So I'm really excited to be back here. If you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it. If you subscribe to the channel, what you're going to get out of this channel is you know, marketing tips, education, you know, inspiration a lot. You know, that's where I feel a lot of my fulfillment comes from is I just want to inspire people who come to this channel to, you know, take a step into the direction and fulfillment of who you want to be in life. So that's the whole goal of this channel. Kind of what I'm going to talk about today is three different things. I want to talk a little bit about my morning routine and why I think it's so important and crucial to have a morning routine. Um, and then if you're an agent, how to keep the conversation going with a client with using content and then also using uh, social proof how to use social proof why you should be using social proof and using video to create that social proof so the first thing I want to talk about is my morning formula and I've never been like you know before I realized the importance of it I was never someone who said like oh you got to wake up at this time every single day and you got to you know have a morning routine but then I realized like the days that I would have a morning routine and I would wake up, hit the gym, come home, do like when I say morning routine, I, you know, like for me, I'll just say I'm getting all over the place a little bit, but it's like you have to have things that get you back to like to center, like get you focused on like where it is that you're working towards. And what I would do is this morning is, yeah, I would work out. I would come home, eat dinner or eat breakfast. I mean, and go to the go to the office. But I think one of the most important things is like you have to be focused on your goals. Like you have to set your intention in the morning. And I think that's what a great morning routine does. Is it kind of like, yes, this is the goal. Like you 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 touch your dreams and your goals about what you're working towards and things. And it like almost feels like with this inspiration and motivation to like, yes, like this is what I'm working towards. This is why today I'm gonna get after it because it's like these things are here i'm feeling it and i and it excites you and it may it just i don't know i found that the days that i do those things are my best days and when i don't do it i sit there and ask myself well why don't i do it because i know that when i do do my morning routine i have the best days and when i don't i really struggle so why it just has to become like an, a consistent thing and i struggled with that these past couple weeks especially but it's no excuse, you know, it's not that hard to do. It's actually very quick to do. It's done at the very beginning of the morning. And I just kind of want to walk through mine. So every single day I wake up I, and I go to the gym, I wake up at 4.30 and I'm at the gym by five. I have my workouts vary. They're from like an hour and 15 to an hour, 45 minutes, just depending on what I'm hitting, followed by like a little 10 minute session in the sauna where I can meditate, just breathe or do whatever, you know, when I'm feeling that day, come home, eat, um, take a shower, get all showered up. And then I like to, what I do is I do what, and this is from people, I learned this from Taylor Welch. It's, he calls it the morning formula. And again, why this is so important is because you have, I, I just truly believe that it's important to touch your goals every single day. Like know what you're working towards because it's really easy to lose sight because there's so much shit that happens in the day from each day. So it's important to remember like why you're doing the things of why you're doing it. Why are you waking up at this amount or this time in the early? Why are you going to your job? Like touch these things and know what you're working towards. So for me is I have like a little vision map. If you guys can see it right here, it's got a couple different pictures of things that I'm working towards. And I really just kind of close my eyes and I visualize these things and feel like I'm already there. So, you know, like the first picture is like of Greece overlooking a beautiful view. Like I just close my eyes, imagine like, man, what it's going to be like. Like I always picture myself, like I'm, I'm riding ATVs and you know, this beautiful view, I'm having a glass of wine, maybe my family's there and I'm hearing my mom just about having like the time of her life. You know, the, this picture over here, I know this kind of maybe seems materialistic, but I hope you don't take it that way. Cause I think money's a good vehicle, but I have pictures of hundred dollars of bills. You know, my goal is I want to, I want to make a shit ton of money. So I picture that amount that I have in my mind that I want to make and I figure and I feel, what does it feel like to make that much money? What is it? What do I do? How does my life look? And I really just, you know, 
hold that tight. The, this one right here is Tony Robbins and he's speaking to a crowd. One of my biggest, you know, dreams in life is I would love to be an inspirational speaker, motivational speaker, you know, person uh, who helps people transform their life. So I just kind of close my eyes and vision like, man, what does that feel like to have a stadium packed out like here to like, cause they want their lives to be better and you're there to help kind of be that vehicle to help them to get there. You know, then I got a car, I got a house that I would love to have one day, a car and um, you know, I put 100 best companies to work for. I think that's probably, I should have this on the front page cause that's probably one of the most important things to me is I wanna build like a workplace that is absolutely incredible with our company here at Ground Zero. Um, so 100 best companies to work for. Uh, we're gonna be on that list one day for the 100 best companies to work for. And you see like when you just start going and I go through these, it gives you like, not a, I don't wanna say chills every single time, but like when you really, like feel these moments like you feel more inspired like when i feel when i do this and i think about that 100 best companies to work for like you're damn right my attitude is different when i go to work that day when i do my morning formula because i'm thinking i'm like dude 100 best companies to work for how does how does what's the energy of someone that's the ceo or the founder or a chairman or a partner of a company that's the 100 best companies to work for and i take that mindset into work you know and i have this thing where it's like it's like reading like a what your life is like, you know? And it's this is where I think Taylor got this from is from this book called Psycho Cybernetics. And it talks about everyone knows like the power of your subconscious and unconscious mind and all these different things. And like when you focus on things and you know, you believe this about it, like the universe just has a way to make it happen and it manifests in your life and things come into place. And I truly believe that. And it's up to you if you wanna believe it or not. I've always been one of those people where it's like, hey. Like, even if it helps or doesn't help, I'm going to do it because I would like to have it actually work. Like, I'll give it a chance. Like, anything that's going to help, like, better my chances, like, I'll do it, you know. I wasn't, I, I've never been like someone, that, oh, that's stupid. Like, I'm not going to do that. That sounds absolutely like a waste of time. I'm like, hey, if it has a chance to make me better and make me, like, be able to hit my goals 100%, let's get to it. So, it's, what it is, is you read this, like, kind of like a paragraph, paraphrasing about, like, who you are, what you do, what does your life look like? Like, it's almost like a biography. If you were to look on your life, like what are the things that are happening in your life? You know, real quick, it might says like, I'm worth a hundred million dollars. I make $10 million every year and I donate a million dollars to people and charities. I run an eight figure marketing agency. Um, how we built the business, what we're best at, what we do. You know, every agent we work with becomes a top producing agent in their market within 12 months, what the business generates, you know, other things that we do. And I, it's like almost like a biography of like, man, this, this is like, this is me. This is what I'm working towards. You know, this is what I'm look, looking to manifest into my life. And when you think about that and you hold on to that, you're just very focused, you know, and I think believe focus is an important thing. So why I think like this morning routine is important is because we get really distracted in our lives with our phones. The minute we wake up, we have notifications going off, people calling, texting us, DMing us, sending us TikTok videos. Then we get on there and then we scroll endlessly. Then we have our work and all these things. And you see how like unfocused that you can get of like the big picture of things of what you're working towards. And I feel like truly that when you are really focused on like, this is what I'm working toward, you have a different level of energy to like what you're doing, the energy that you carry within those moments. I, I'm not gonna sit here and say, I do this every single day consistently, cause there are days I struggle. And my goal is to like be doing this every single day. Like it's like a habit. It's like, I'm a robot. I get up, I do this after, you know, I shower and hit the gym and I get refocused on the things that are exciting to me about what I'm working towards in life. Cause the energy is just different. So importance of a morning routine. I think everybody should have one. If you don't have a morning routine or something that really like refocuses you and recenters you to your goals and what's important and what you're working towards, I, I really do think that it's going to be kind of a, a good difference maker in helping you just have more better days. And that's the whole thing, you know, like you have one good day, how many can you stack together, you know? And it's like, when I don't do this, I don't have my best days. But when I do this, I have great days. So you know, how much better am I going to be if I could do this consistently for 21 days, for 48 days, for 100 days, you know, it's like that 1%, what's the energy like? So importance of a morning routine. Second thing I want to talk to um, is like how to keep the conversation going with content. It's so important. So here at Ground Zero, we help agents exactly like I was saying, dominate their markets using video content, really using that digital farming and stuff like that. 
And one of the biggest things I'm always saying is content, content, content. But I think also is now like when people start to generate leads and create conversations with people, um, still sometimes you get someone that takes time to actually convert. They may have given you your email, their phone number and stuff like that. Now they're in your database. How do you keep that conversation going without being salesy? And I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And this is not just with leads. It could be your sphere of influence, the database that's already in there. It's really important to keep contact in contact with these people so you stay top of mind. So I think something that's very simple that all agents should be able to do is create a weekly newsletter. If you're creating content, you're posting it out on your Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube, different places like this, all you have to do is you can use those content pieces that you put out each week Find the best pieces of content that you created are the most important topics that you talked about and put those into a weekly newsletter and then just send it out to your database, you know, and maybe you can include two or three different things. It could be a blog. It could be a video, maybe like a housing market update, show them some available property, show them what like listings went for in the area, give them some different options to be able to click through on that. It might take you an hour a week to create this newsletter, but when you're sending that out every single week, to people in your database, it's going to build like trust, authority, omnipresence with them where they're like, oh man, I always get so much value from this thing. Like I've worked with realtors where we've sent weekly newsletters through, um, you know, MailChimp and stuff like that, where they've reached out and they're like, hey, I've been getting your newsletters for the past four months. You know, they've really been helpful and I've liked them a lot. We're ready to list our house and we 100% want to go with you. Oh, we're getting ready to buy. Because that's just how it is. It's just nurturing the relationship, continuing to build the relationship with great content that's not just always educating. And it's never asking for a sale. We really never, ever advise a realtor to ask for a sale in like those weekly pieces of content um, on, on the email. It's always information, like giving away free value, edutaining is what I like to say. Educating, but entertaining as well. Because you want people, people want to be entertained on any platform that they're in. So we want to make sure that we're creating content that people want to engage with, that they actually want to spend time to watch and, you know, digest as well too. So I think that's very important. And that's why like when it goes back to, if you're using videos that you posted on your socials throughout the week, you can just find the videos that perform the best. And, you know, since you already kind of have proof of concept that they worked on these platforms with engagement, they're going to probably work pretty well on your email list. So that's something because... I always hear like realtors say like, oh, I lost this listing to some other agent. You know, I came in here, they were in my database. I'm like, well, how did the communication look between, you know, when they first came into your database to, to now? And a lot of the times that gap from when they make a decision is like three to four months. Like, oh, like I called them like two or three times. And, you know, then I reached back out like two months later, asked if they were ready. And, you know, and when I just recently followed up, I they, they told me that they had chosen another realtor. I'm like, well, how come you didn't have any communication via email or text or something, you know, every single week for that time period, do you think that would have helped? I'm like, yeah, I would have. I just, I just don't know why I didn't do it. So I think it's a great thing to do to be able to keep the conversation going. Even if they don't respond to you, it just shows them that you care, you want to give value, that you're an authority figure and things like that. So use content to keep the conversation going with your clients. And the last thing I want to talk about today is social proof, using video to create social proof. You know, one of the things why Yelp is so big is because humans have like this innate thing where we fear making the wrong decision. Like I know for me, I go to Yelp and I look through like if I'm gonna go to a restaurant in the area or I look up the restaurant, I read the reviews, I see what the stars are and I see what people are saying because I dictate like my experience is going to probably fall somewhere in the same realm of what every single other person is saying on this. So if people are saying bad things about the restaurant, the food's not good, the service isn't good, like does that make me feel like I wanna go to that type of place? No, because I feel like if all these people are having that same experience, then I might as well too. So it's, you know, that's why it's important. And you know, this people are asking the same thing about your business is what was other people's experience with this person um, because it's painting the picture for them about what they think the experience is going to be like. So when you close with someone it's and you think that you did a great job, not think, you know you did a great job. You need to create a video testimonial. And there's different ways that you can go about this. You can offer people a gift. You, you, a lot of times if you just do a great job with helping someone sell or help them buy a home, they'll just create want to create a video for you. You know, have a couple questions that you know that people are asking you in terms of like, 
What are the biggest objections that you have that people give you before working with you? And then when you close with someone, ask them, how did I help you overcome? Boom. And you have those set lists of objections and then they just answer them. And then that video right there, you turn it into a nice little testimonial video, you know, that introduces them and it, it says everything. You put that on your social pages, your Google business profile, your YouTube and places where it's just easily accessible, your website. And then now people are like, wow, this person had this experience. Like they were in the same position as me. They had no money saved for their down payment or something. And he helped them this way. Like if he can help them or she can help them, they can help me as well too. So you kind of see the power of the social proof after every single closing. It should not be like, and if you want to do it or should I do it, it should be 100%. You should be doing this after each closing is getting a video testimonial with your clients. And if the clients don't want to get on video, which I completely understand, not everyone is wanting to get behind the camera and shoot content, at least a blog about it, at least something written where you email them some questions if it's you or your assistant right after the closing and saying like, hey, our, our business is really ran off of, you know, referrals and what other people are saying um, and reviews and things like that. I wanted to know if I could ask you a couple questions and if you could just answer them honestly about what your experience was like, you know, and send that over to them and it, to help incentivize people. Maybe you can offer them like, hey, I'll give you a $15 Starbucks gift card or something like this. Or, you know, I think that's why closing gifts are great. You send a closing gift and like, you know, a couple days after you can send that email or a text or something like that or ask them for the, the review. But I think reviews and getting testimonials are a very important piece to you know, converting more clients because like I said earlier, is that people naturally, they have this innate thing where they just do not want, they're fearful of making the wrong decision. Um, that, you know, that's why people read reviews on Amazon before buying products, or be why we go to Yelp, why there's all these different places that talk about what the experience is like about working with the place because we want to work with a place that other people are having a good experience with. So I think it's important to kind of tell that story about you know, where people were, how you help them achieve the result and things like that. And I think that you'll close more, get more transactions from that. And I'm not saying right away, but if you continually do that, you are 100% going to get some more transactions under your belt. So I hope you guys got some value out of this important thing. First, create a morning routine for yourself that helps you get centered back to understanding what it is that you're working towards in your goals. Second thing is, is keep the conversation going with content. The content that you're creating, getting behind the camera, find a way to put that into a weekly newsletter to keep the conversation going with people in your um, your sphere, your group, your audience, your email list, your database. I guess it was the word I was looking for, your database. And then lastly, social proof. After every single closing, try to create a video testimonial. And if you don't have closings, like just on a quick side note, like if you've never, if you're a new agent and you don't have any transactions yet, like you can get testimonials from just asking your friends, your family members about like the type of person you are, you know, I, I think that's important. It, it could be utilized definitely as well too. You know, if you haven't closed a transaction, just say, Hey, you know, uncle Bob, like, can you just mention some of the things about me? Like, how do you think that, you know, I handle situations and what, what stands out about me and things like that. People want to know that as well too. So yeah, just a quick side note. But again, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead, hit the subscribe button below. It should be somewhere on the screen and I uh, appreciate you for watching the video. We'll see you guys next time.